Uh, Ettore was an, it, what they call an intuitive engineer. He just had this knack of picking up a pencil and drawing solutions. My name is Angela Hooker and I'm the curator here at the Bugatti Trust Museum and Study Centre. The Bugatti Trust was opened nearly 30 years ago, so we're all very excited about next year because we can have a wonderful anniversary. Um, and uh, it was opened by Prince Philip, actually, who came here and joined the rest of the team who had uh, put an awful lot of time, effort and money into setting up this Heritage Centre for all things Bugatti. To understand, or to begin to understand what Ettore Bugatti's motivations and successes were based on, we, we have to look at the whole family. He comes from a Milanese family where everyone was very creative, very daring in their approach to creativity, which I think is a very special way of, uh, of looking at things. So his father was a very skilled furniture designer and uh, influenced by Art Nouveau, Art Deco, the Moresque influences. His brother was a wonderful sculptor. And uh, I think when they were very young, Ettore was supposed to go into art and study art, and his brother was supposed to become an engineer, but it turned out that each one of them had very clearly the opposite talent. So Rembrandt was the one who did art and uh, Ettore was an, it, what they call an intuitive engineer. He just had this knack of picking up a pencil and drawing solutions. And that engineering ability combined with a background of an eye for beauty and beautiful lines created these incredible cars. Bugatti Trust was founded as a registered UK charity with educational aims and objectives. So the idea is to use the incredible archive here, which contains 27,000 technical drawings from the original factory, 10,000 plus photographs, thousands of documents, and study them, and use that knowledge to encourage the next generation of engineers and designers. Because of the Bugatti Trust's educational aims and objectives, we sort of pride ourselves in making sure that people come through the door enthused, whether they're 95 or 5 years old. We're very lucky we have the support of Cheltenham Science Group, who does the uh, science activities for us. And um, when we go and do outreach work with universities and local schools, we make sure they are inspired by the work of Vittorio Bugatti, but then have the courage to give it a go themselves. The Type 5950B Bugatti, which we affectionately call the Vimeo Bugatti, well, we're not the only ones, uh, the rest of the world calls it the Vimeo Bugatti, came to Prescott 80 years ago for the first international meeting held by the Bugatti Owners Club. So I don't know how much you know about the history, but the Bugatti Owners Club is 90 years old and had the opportunity to buy Prescott Hill. And they organized this international meeting in 1939 and Jean Bugatti, son of the famous constructor Ettore Bugatti, came here with the Type 5950B Bugatti to show what Bugattis can do. What I'd like to point out about the Vimeo car here is that um, it's been not out of France for 80 years. The last time it ran was 1945, when it competed in the Cup of the Prisoners in Paris, which was a race to celebrate the end of the Second World War. When it was here, it was driven by Jean-Pierre Vimille, who was one of the most celebrated and successful racing drivers of his time. It's probably the most powerful racing Bugatti that came out of the factory. 4.7 litre engine, nearly 500 horsepowers, and he managed to achieve second fastest time of day when he um, came to compete in it here. The other exciting thing about the Vimeo Bugatti is that it's completely unrestored. It's not been driven, raced or touched since 1945. Uh, it's a time capsule of a Bugatti. I barely dare to breathe next to it because I don't want any pain flakes coming off. It's, uh, it's, it's an exceptional historical uh, car and we're delighted to have it here at the Trust till September and I shall miss it very much when it goes back home to the Schlumpf Museum. <laughs> Bugattis are exciting to drive. So one of my favourite Bugattis was the Type 53 Bugatti, which is four-wheel drive, permanent four-wheel drive. So uh, I've driven that at Prescott, at the Newburgh Ring. I've driven it in the middle of Manhattan for an event, which was rather 
strange and the acoustics were incredible. So you can imagine that kind of uh, big Grand Prix car in the middle of, uh, middle of New York was, uh, was quite special, <laughs> very surreal. Um, but what makes it special is that every single drive is different from the one before. And uh, that's exciting. So the same way that, uh, I don't know if I should compare it to relationships or friendships, but if I sit into my normal day car, my mummy car, I want to get in there and not have to use my brain to drive the car, because my brain will be busy with mum stuff, grown-up stuff, um, life stuff. But when I get into a Bugatti, my brain is focusing only on the drive. All my senses are focusing on the drive and you use all of them. You can smell if something is going wrong. You would know if there's an issue with the brakes or the clutch. Um, your ears will tell you whether you're revving the wrong way or in fact everyone's ears will tell you if you're changing gears the wrong way. <laughs> um, but it's exciting and you live in the moment and we're all told for our mental health how important it is to live in the moment and really embrace what you're doing at that point in time. And I think Bugattis and probably all vintage cars have that in common, that you're really 100% in the moment.